this video is created by Jagrat Creations. It is on piecemeal distribution and the method that I am going to discuss is maximum loss method. Hence this video is useful to the students who are reading for CA, IPCC, Inter CA, BCom and other professional courses who has this piecemeal distribution maximum loss method as a part of their syllabus. I want to take care of one sum. I would like to explain you the theory concept of maximum loss method for the purpose of solving the sum. Just observe the sum that I intend to solve here before you. A, B, C are partners sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 1 respectively. They decided to dissolve the firm on 31-3-2017. On this date, their balance sheet is as follows. On asset side, you are given fixed assets, other current assets, cash balance. Capital A, B, C, 20,000, 20,000, 16,000. Sunday creditors, 50,000. Assets realized in installment as under. First installment, 44,000. Second installment, 32,000. Third installment, 8,000. From the above information, prepare a statement showing peaceful distribution of cash as per maximum loss method. This is the sum that I intend to solve. Now, in case of dissolution, what we do for accounting for dissolution? All assets are realized. From the realized value, all liabilities are paid Profit or loss on realization of assets and settlement of liability is distributed amongst partners in the ratio of their profit sharing. So their capital balance is increases because of realization profit, their capital balances decreases because of realization loss. After giving the effect of realization profit or loss, partners capital is being redeemed and the funds available with us are exactly equal to the claims of partners after recording for realization profit or loss. That is the normal philosophy. Now, if you look at this problem, the assets realized 44,000, 32,000, 8,000. So total amount realized for assets is this total is 84,000. The value of asset is 60,000 plus 40,000. 1 lakh is the total book value of asset. And its realized value is 84,000. So, loss on realization of asset is 1 lakh minus 84,000, 16,000. You are not given how these creditors or how the creditors are being settled. They are of 50,000. You are not told anything about the payment of creditors in this sum. So we presume, and it is always presumed, that creditors are paid their claims as per books. So 50,000 rupees are paid to creditors. So there is no gain or loss in case of payment of creditors. So here there is a loss of 16,000 in case of realization of asset. There is no other loss so far as the settlement of creditors is concerned. So your realization account will show you a loss of 16,000. How this loss of 16,000 is arrived at? Notice once again. Total realized value of assets is 84,000. Book value of asset is 1 lakh. 1 lakh minus 84,000. 16,000 is the realization loss. I am just solving the sum on dissolution. Forget about peaceful distribution right now. I am going to talk about peaceful distribution after a couple of minutes. So realization loss is 16,000. This loss will be distributed in the ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 1. So share of A in loss will be 8,000. Share of B in the loss also 1 fourth of 16,000, so 4,000. Share of C in loss is 4,000. So share of A in loss, realization loss 8,000. Well, 20,000 is the capital, minus 8,000 loss, 
that is a redeemable capital at dissolution of the partnership firm. Here the capital is 20,000, loss to his share is 4,000, so 20,000 minus 4,000 is the capital redeemable to be share capital of C is 16,000, his share in loss is 4,000, so 16,000 minus 4,000 is the amount payable to these partners. So after reducing the loss from the capital of A, B and C, the amount payable to them, as I mentioned to you, is how much 8,000, 4,000, 4,000 losses are deducted therefrom. So the amount of capital payable to them will be 12,000, 16,000 and 12,000. Because 20,000 minus 8,000, 12,000, 20,000 minus 4,000, 16,000, 16,000 minus 4,000, 12,000. This is the capital payable. If you make a total of the capital payable to them, how much will be? How much will be? Total 56,000 minus 16,000 loss. So 40,000 is the total capital payable. How much cash you will have for the payment of this capital? The assets realized is 84,000. Cash balance with you is 6,000. So 84,000 plus 6,000, 90,000 is the funds cash available to you for the payment of liability and for redemption of capital. The liability is 50,000. So from 90,000, 50,000 will be paid and 40,000 is the capital redeemable. How much capital each will get? 20,000 minus 8,000, 12,000. 20,000 minus 4,000, 16,000 and 16,000 minus 4,000, 12,000. This is the total capital payable to them. That total is also 40,000. And how, and we have got 40,000 cash available because assets real is 84,000, cash balance 6,000, 84 plus 6, 90,000. 90,000 minus payment made to creditors, 50,000. 40,000 cash is left and the capital redeemable is also 40,000 after recording realization loss. This is how we calculate this sum if it is a sum on dissolution of a partnership firm. But in that sum, the realized value of asset, 84,000, is taken or presumed to have been realized at a point of time. In case of piecemeal distribution, same 84,000 are realized gradually. So first installment, 40, 44,000. Second installment, 32,000. Third installment, 8,000. So amount realized gradually. So, out of this 44,000, how much payment should be made and to whom, in what priority? Say for example, I have got a cash balance of 6,000, 44,000 rupees are received. So, 44 plus 6, 50,000. I have to pay outsiders first. So, first payment will be made to Creditors 50,000. Next installment received 32,000. Out of 32,000, how much amount is payable to A, B, and C? We know the total amount payable. But do we know the total amount payable after receiving the second installment? We don't know the total amount payable after recording all realization losses. We don't know the total amount payable to A, B, C after recording all realization losses because still we have not received the third installment and we don't know exact amount of third installment that we are going to receive. So out of this 32,000, see 32 plus 2 for 8, so total 40,000 is to be paid to them. But you also know that out of 40,000, who is going to get what? A is going to get 20 minus 8, 12,000. B is going to get 20 minus 4, 16,000. C is going to get 16 minus 4, 12,000. But, and this second and third installment total is also 40,000. But how much amount A will receive out of 32,000 as a first installment after payment of creditors? And how much amount A will receive out of 8,000 after distributing or after making payment of to the creditors and after distributing the second installment? And this is what is the question that how will you distribute this amount realized for assets in installments? How will it be applied 
First, it will be it will be applied for the payment of liabilities towards outsiders. Then the payment will be made for partners' loan. Then the payment will be made against partners' capital claim. This is a sequence in which the payment has to be made. But how to how to distribute the cash available amongst partners after settlement of all outside liabilities? That is a crux of the quest. That is a crux, or that is a question. This which we are required to address in this chapter of piecemeal distribution. Now I want to apply maximum loss method for the purpose of piecemeal distribution. Now the maximum loss method prescribes whatever the process for redemption of capital that you follow. In case of dissolution, same process should be followed. How that how the same process is being followed? That I'll explain you while solving the sum. I'll go into the more details for explanation of maximum loss method while solving the sum. So now I start preparing the distribution statement, piecemeal distribution statement. In this piecemeal distribution statement, the number of columns that I require to prepare, I am required to prepare a column for outside creditors. I am required to prepare a column for partners' capital claim. I am required to prepare a column for cash balance. So this is how I prepare. The piecemeal distribution. This is a particulars cash column creditors A capital of A B C. From this liability side, I will write the balances in this piecemeal statement capital of A, B, and C. Creditors balance fifty thousand, cash balance six thousand. So first, I write all these balances. Now, I will go for piecemeal distribution. Six thousand is the cash balance. First, you have to pay to the outsiders. So six thousand cash balance paid to the outsiders. So from fifty thousand, six thousand gets paid. Now amount payable to outsider is forty-four thousand. After this distribution of six thousand, I got the first instalment of forty-four thousand. So cash received forty-four thousand. That has to be applied for the payment of outsiders. Outsiders liability creditors liability is forty four thousand. I have got a cash of forty four thousand, so I can make a payment of forty four thousand to the creditors. So pay to creditors forty four thousand. So cash balance is zero, and creditors outstanding balance is also zero. This is a first explanatory sum. So I haven't I haven't kept any misspells about the cash available and the balance for creditors. Now my main focus is to distribute. The second instalment, thirty-two thousand. How should it be distributed amongst partners as per maximum loss method? So I have got a second instalment, thirty-two thousand. How to distribute this thirty-two thousand? All outsiders are paid. Only payment has to be made to the part against partners' capital. How much payment to each partner need be made from this thirty-two thousand is a question under piecemeal distribution. Now, total amount payable to the partners is twenty plus twenty plus sixteen, fifty-six thousand. So fifty-six thousand is payable. How much cash do you have at present? Thirty-two thousand. How much cash do you have? Thirty-two thousand available cash. Now, presume that you are not going to get any instalment henceforth, and this is the last instalment. Then what is the Loss that could occur that that is identified as maximum loss. So if I don't get any further instalment right now, and I have got a cash balance of thirty-two thousand, and my obligation to pay against capital is fifty-six thousand. So against the capital claim fifty-six thousand, I have got thirty-two thousand. So at this point of time, the maximum possible loss is. Fifty-six thousand minus thirty-two thousand. So this is how maximum loss is worked out. After working out the maximum loss, that will be distributed amongst partner in the ratio of profit sharing. In this case, it is two is two, one is two, one. So maximum loss is loss is distributed. Maximum loss distributed will be deducted from the capital balance of the partners. So after, this is the first step that you should follow. So what is partners claim? What is the cash balance available? Difference between the two is identified as maximum loss. Maximum loss should be distributed amongst partners in the ratio of profit sharing. So let me prepare a working note. So far as these many steps. 
So this is a working note, capital balance. A twenty four thousand, B twenty thousand, sixteen thousand. This is the capital balance. Fifty six thousand is the capital claim. Now the cash balance available to me is thirty two thousand. So difference between this fifty six thousand and thirty two thousand that is the maximum possible loss at this juncture, under a presumption that no further instalments are going to be realized. So maximum loss is fifty six thousand minus thirty two thousand twenty four thousand. Is the maximum so total capital minus cash available for distribution? This is the definition of maximum loss. This maximum loss is required to be distributed in the ratio of two is to one is to one. So twenty four thousand distributed in the ratio of two is to one is to one. So twenty four thousand into one half twelve thousand. Twenty four thousand into one four six thousand. Twenty four thousand into one four six thousand. So this is a loss distributed. After distributing this, those twenty thousand minus twelve thousand, the capital balance payable is eight thousand. Twenty thousand minus six thousand, capital balance payable is fourteen thousand, and sixteen thousand minus six thousand, this is the capital balance payable. So out of this thirty two thousand, eight thousand will be paid to A, fourteen thousand to B, ten thousand to C. This is how. Maximum loss is deducted and balance capital is paid out. Now let me make a payment. So on the basis of this thirty-two thousand out of thirty-two thousand, eight thousand is paid to A, fourteen thousand paid to B, ten thousand capital paid to C. Now what is the capital balance left there after twelve plus six plus six? So it is twenty-four thousand. That is the balance there. Now, I got the last installment eight thousand. Now the capital proportion and the profit sharing ratio is same. Capital proportion is twelve is to six is to six. Profit sharing ratio is also two is to one is to one. When the capital proportion and profit sharing ratio are at par, in the course of distribution of installment, always distribute the installments in the profit sharing ratio. Because whatever the realized value of asset that you get, that realized value of asset has got two elements: one capital element and second profit or loss element. Profit or loss element should be distributed in the profit and loss ratio. Capital element should be distributed in the capital proportion. Now, when the capital ratio and the profit sharing ratio is same, then whatever the realized value of asset is there, which holds capital proportion and the Profit or loss proportion, but as the capital proportion and profit and loss proportion is same in this come now, twelve is to six is to six, so two is to one is to one, and the profit sharing ratio is also two is to one is to one. So you can afford to distribute this eight thousand straight way in the ratio of two is to one is to one. Or otherwise, if you want to prepare a working note, you can prepare a working note, but the distribution is going to occur in the ratio of two is to one is to one. So twelve thousand, six thousand, six thousand is the capital. Cash balance available eight thousand. Now the realization loss works out to be sixteen thousand. That I have already explained to you while introdu introducing you to the sum. So sixteen thousand is the realization loss that will be distributed in the ratio of two is to one is to one. So eight thousand, four thousand, four thousand is the loss. So twelve thousand minus eight thousand, four thousand. Six thousand minus four thousand, two thousand. Six thousand minus so four is to two is to two. That is also in the ratio of. Two is to one is to one. So payment made to the partners four thousand, two thousand, and two thousand. Now this, now left is realization loss. That is eight thousand, four thousand, four thousand. That I have already calculated initially while explaining you the sum. Now see, this is the first sum on a maximum loss method that I started explaining to you. But I am going to take. Certain important other points in my next sum. So I have tried to explain you this maximum loss method. I feel that you have followed all these things. Thanks to.